WNBA star center Brittany Griner has been detained in Russia uh, in February after police found vape canisters with cannabis oil in her luggage. Now, she pled guilty one week ago and said she packed the cartridges accidentally. Now, Griner appeared in a Russian court today, but no verdict was reached. Her next appearance is in just hours as she faces 10 years in a Russian jail. Well, LeBron James, who never met a moment to bash the country that made him a billionaire he didn't like, offered this trenchant analysis. Brittany Griner, she is in Russia. She's been there over 110 days. Now, how can she feel like America has her back? I would be feeling like, do I even want to go back to America? Unreal. Joining me now is Ennis Cantor Freedom, former center for the Boston Celtics and human rights activist. Ennis, you're here tonight because you have a message for billionaire LeBron James. What is it? Well, he's, he's an unappreciative uh, billionaire. You know, when I see people taking their freedom for granted, it breaks my heart. I wish I can just, you know, buy a t plane ticket and take him to some of the countries out there in the world and he, should, he will definitely appreciate it more. But when I hear his comments, I was just not shocked. You know, I was like, well, you know, he's been hating, hating on uh, this country for a long time. But the, the important thing is we should keep people. Uh, I, 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 it just like kills my heart when I see comments like this, because the thing is like there, there are other side of the people uh, of the world that suffering so much, are going through so many tough times. And I wish that I can show them what people are going through there. Well, Ennis, he knows, though. I mean, it, the, <laughs> the man has been yeah. to China to play basketball. You know, he's famously got upset when anyone mm -hmm. would criticize China or, or jeopardize the NBA relationship with the Communist Party of China. So he knows full well the way other people live, and he doesn't care. So you're being very charitable here tonight. I mean, but Le LeBron did try to clean it up. Let me just tell you what he tweeted. He said, my comments weren't knocking our beautiful country. I was simply saying how Griner's probably feeling emotionally along with so many other emotions. Long story short, hashtag bring her home. Uh, Annis, do you buy that? First of all, everybody knows that it's a walk back. After he's, you know, get a lot of backlashes uh, on social media, obviously his PR team tried to clean it up, but it's not going to work, you know. And, like, he needs to understand, like, you know, uh, Brittany Griner wrote a letter to President Biden, and actually President Biden, uh, you know, wrote a letter back to her after she was considering the not to play the national anthem rest of the year of uh, WNBA season. Um, I think people need to understand uh, what's going on. And LeBron James, I mean, he earned his money in this country. He earned his respect. He earned his fame. He, uh, he, this country gives you everything that did you own. And you're an unappreciative billionaire, and that is unacceptable. And as a writer at Deadspin came after you tonight saying, and his freedom has a lot of nerve. He was critical of LeBron James when he could have been Brittany Griner. Or worse, the piece goes on. Your native country, Turkey, revoked your passport for speaking out against their dictator, and you were stuck overseas with no way back to America. I truly shudder to think what would have happened had the Turkish government gotten its hands on you. And it's, um, it's hardly worthy of response, but it's actually so stupid that it's funny. I mean, your response. <laughs> I mean, oh my God, you know, I lost my career just because of I stand up for the things that I believe in. I actually lost my family. Last time I saw my family was back in 2015 because I was speaking about the, some of the you know, problems were happening in the Turkey. So I did pay the price. You know, we always say, don't just talk about it, be about it. I think, you know, tweeting about it is fine and talking, giving interviews is fine. But what kind of sacrifices that you're making, you know, when you call yourself a human rights activist, social justice uh, warrior and stuff, right? You cannot be going out there and signing a deal with this uh, hypocrite companies like Nike when you know, your shoes are being literally made by slaves in China. That is unacceptable. So I did pay, pay the price. What about LeBron? Well, when you th think about some of your former fellow players, I imagine there's a diversity mm -hmm. of thought about all of these issues, um, yet people are afraid to speak out, aren't they? Oh, my God, yes. Yes, I'm free. I remember first time I started to speak out about, you know, the problems that are happening in China. One of my teammates walked uh, walk walk up to me in the locker room and said, you know, this is your last year in the league, right? You are not going to play a b basketball after this year. It's over for you. And I was really shocked. I'm like, 
What are you talking about? It's like when you criticize China and you're an NBA player, when you criticize Nike, you are not going to get another, another, another job after this. But I was very sad. I actually, like, re tried to re reach out to so many other NBA players, so many, and not just an NBA, other organizations, associations, other, even the Olympians, because it was right before the Beijing Olympics. I'm like, listen, there are so many. There is a genocide happening while we are dribbling the basketball here in America. Please join me. Let's make this a moment. Well, what they said bro broke my heart. They said, listen, man, I think what you're doing is so courageous. We love you. We support you. We just cannot do it out loud. And I asked them, what do you mean? They said, well, we have a shoe deals, endorsement deals. We have jersey sales. We, have, we want to get another next paycheck. And I asked them one simple question. Put yourself in their shoes. If your mother, if your sister, if, or if your daughter was in those concentration camps in China getting tortured and raped every day, would you still pick money over your morals? No answer. And it's a shame. You know, we need to hold this at is accountable because they have a huge platform to talk about whatever they want to talk about. They have a huge platform to inspire millions of kids out there. But they're picking, they're literally picking money over their morals and principles and uh, values. Anas, um, the globalists all stick together. They're all protecting China. When's, when's the last time we had that Hollywood blockbuster about Mao come out? You know, that, that's never going to be made. So, uh, mm -hmm. Anas, we, we really appreciate your speaking out and your courage continued courage on this and so many other issues. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.